So you've got your fountain pen inked up and presumably ready to write. You begin your first letter and a deluge of ink gushes onto the page or perhaps nothing, nothing at all, zero flow, just a sad dry nib dragging against an empty page. Both excessive flow and poor flow can certainly happen. So we're going to have to resolve that. Before we dive too deep, there are some things that you can do first. First of all, clean your pen. Seriously, 80% or more of problems that we encounter here at the Boulay Pen Company are fixed by the customer simply cleaning their pen. You can also rule out some other things uh, one at a time, like uh, trying a new ink, trying a new converter or cartridge, and by using a different paper. It really could be anything. It could be something on or in the pen. It could be the ink, it could be the paper, and it could even be you, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. If your pen is writing inconsistently or intermittently, or if your nib feels scratchy, check out the videos listed below. In the meantime, here are some common issues that could cause your pen to have flow issues and how to fix them. Quick disclaimer here, we have a process for helping you with your pen. So if you got it from us, reach out uh, before you attempt any manipulations. We're not responsible for any damages you might do to your pen while trying to fix it. This video is meant to be a quick, basic troubleshooting assist based on our successful experiences with our customers. Let's start with excessive flow. This can cause by a number of things, like how the nib and the feed might not be set correctly into the pen. So nibs and feeds are like a happy sandwich and uh, they are inserted into the uh, grip section or nib housing. However, if they're not aligned with each other or if they have uh, somehow scooched out of their housing, that can certainly create a problem. If your reservoir, usually a converter um, or a you know pen barrel, has a crack in it, that will cause more air to get into it. And the effectiveness of each and every fountain pen depends heavily on a precise balance of air-ink interchange. Too much air in your reservoir means too much ink on your paper. Finally, if you're writing with a pen that you've just inked up by dipping your nib, your feed might be oversaturated. Your tines on your nib might also be too far apart. Ah! Also, the tines on your nib being too far apart might cause a problem as well. So your nib should look like this. A tiny bit of space at the bottom of the slit, and then it should narrow as you get to the top with a tiny little bit of space up at the top or just barely touching at the top. Also, if your tines are touching all the way up and you can't see any light through them, also bad ink is not going to have anywhere to go. If the nib and feed are not set correctly into the pen, that can also be problematic. Many nib and feed pairings need to be installed in a certain way. So make sure that is happening and everything is where it should be. Your converter may not be letting ink flow either. Physics could be your enemy here. Uh, pressure sometimes keeps your ink suspended up in your converter when it should be flowing down to your nib and feed. Sometimes your feed could also be clogged or even defective. Old ink clumps or shimmer particles could be totally shutting down your flow. So what do you do? First, consider changing your ink. A lot of issues people report are from very dry or very wet inks. So if you feel the pen has too much flow and you're using Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, the ink is your problem. If it has very poor flow and you happen to be using Sailor, ha ha, well, ha ha, the joke's on you. That's a super dry ink, uh, so that's not going to be a gusher. Your pen also just might not love a particular ink, so that's worth a shot before you do anything major. If your ink is creating lots of blobs on your page right after you fill it, just blot your feed using a paper towel to remove any excess ink. It should chill out after that. Try taking the nib and feed out realigning the nib and feed, and then reseating them and making sure that uh, everything is aligned. You'll sometimes see guides built in to the feed where your nib is supposed to rest. So just make sure that you're um, aligning everything with those guides. And check your feed. If it's all gunked up with shimmer ink that you didn't remove from last year, that's probably your problem. So clean your pen and scrub your feed to get anything that's hiding in the fins out of there, especially in this main ink channel. 
This is a perfect application for the Droulet feed brush, or the Goulet feed brush, as some people call it. And if your ink is hanging up in your converter, sometimes your converter might just need a little tap to get your ink down over that air pocket. Also, switching from an ink converter to a cartridge, or vice versa, could identify whether or not the converter is the weak link that needs to be replaced. And finally, check your time spacing. Um, this will be much easier to do if your nib is clean and dry, because you'll want to look at it right in front of a light source. So you can see you know, how much light is coming through the nib. You could also use a loop to make this a lot easier. So if you do have a situation where your spacing is too wide, then you can bring everything together pretty simply. Um, or if it's too tight, you can handle that as well. If it's too tight, it's a little bit more complicated. You'll need to take a brass shim, which we sell, or some other type of very, 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 very thin piece of metal and put it in through the back of the uh, breather hole here and bring it up and you'll just want to kind of wedge it back and forth and to open these things up a bit. So the gold or steel of the nib is gonna be much more resilient than the tipping material, which is welded on to the nib. So you don't wanna manipulate anything up here. If you stick anything in here, don't bring it up here and start moving it back and forth because you could do that. And having to bring these things back together then and then out and then in and then they can just all fall apart and that's nobody's having a good time there. So be super conservative when you're doing those manipulations or any manipulations. Do a little bit, tiny, tiny bit and check. Do a tiny bit and check. If it is too wide, that's a little bit easier. You will just need to take your tines and cross one over the other a little bit, a little bit, and then, because then this one will be higher, you'll need to bring this one down below and do the opposite, move this one over a little bit. And just kind of keep repeating that until you can then check the spacing and you've got a better situation than that. So once you get the spacing correctly, uh, it'll probably be misaligned. And that's okay, you did a lot of work to it, but now you'll need to realign it. So once you insert the nib back into your feed and you're ready to do that fine tuning because this will be scratchy, right? Not good. You'll need to take this one and bend it down just a little bit. Uh-oh, too much, bring it back up, there we go. And then, ah, now we're happy. So make sure that is your final step or else all your hard work will be for naught because you'll be left with a scratchy nib. Again, only start manipulating your nib if you're careful and confident. This will very likely void your warranty with the manufacturer and disqualify you from any store return policy. If you're unable to get the pen the way you want or feel like you just shouldn't, then seeking the assistance of a nib technician is the best bet. I'll include several links for some in the description below. Of course, if it's an option, you could also seek out a replacement nib. Hopefully that helps. I wish you the very best in your fountain pen adventures. Have fun, right on.